come close. She lives. Your, your sister lives. She bears the mark of Cree. She is the last of the six. They took her south of here to a necropolis. You must seek out the desert. Look for an ancient city of death. Go, go help your sister. Here, boy, take my axe. It has served me well. <laughs> Much blood did it drink here today. <laughs> It was good to taste combat once more. Now, leave an old warrior to lay as he ended. Everything depends upon you now, Rao. Fulfill your destiny. <coughs> Protect her. For years, my master had trained the Poseidon Bao Musa, a noble warrior. He had become a fine swordsman and his training was now almost complete. But why train if he was to stay in the safety of his home forever? My master was restless. It was time to move on, time to take his first step into manhood. His muscles yearned for action, his heart sought adventure. His sword craved combat. Seek out an ancient tree and eat its fruit. The fruit that grows on this tree has great power, and when eaten will show you your destiny, for this tree is an oracle. I bid you welcome. You did well to make it this far. It has been a long time since my vision has been used for good. I thank you for this. You have a heroic future ahead of you. Many songs will be written in your honor. Your name will be used to comfort children on stormy nights. Barbarian, 
you shall one day sit amongst gods. But first you have questions. You are troubled. The fortune teller was right in sending you to me. Who is the dark one you aided yet repaid you with a curse? What was the parchment you stole from Sumbu Usu's tomb? Who are the Kasai? And where is your place in all of this? The Kasai are an ancient order, an evil sect who worship the Dark Gods and wish to control this world. The Dark One, as you call him, is also evil. He wishes harm to you and your family line. He has ideas above his status. He is a twisted magi, a sorcerer, and a necromancer. It is he who attempts to hide your importance from you, as only you can stop him. The scroll you stole from the tomb of Sumbu Usu was not what the Dark One would have you believe. It was not paper. It was skin. Human skin. The mark on it was a birthmark. A design holding secret words hidden within. Words written in an ancient tongue. Words from a long-forgotten spell known as the Mark of Cree. Six people have this mark, each holding a line from the spell within its designs. The Dark One has searched many years for these, for they are words of power. He has now found four of these symbols. He has four lines of the spell in his possession. One of which you unwittingly secured him. The sixth symbol is safely hidden and well protected. But alas, the fifth is now prisoner to the Dark One. The fifth mark belongs to a boy held in a temple where he awaits death, for soon he will be sacrificed. Barbarian, therein lies your destiny. You must go to the boy. Do what you can to save him. He is where your future lies. Before you go, I have a gift to aid you in your struggle. This is Tayaha. It is an ancient weapon carved from my body. It will help you fight many enemies at once. Now, travel back to your home, and let Baumusu teach you the ways of the Tayaha. Use this weapon wisely, and learn well, Barbarian. Be strong. Much depends on you. Gather round, all of you who would listen. I have a tale to tell. A story of warriors and kings. A saga of dark magic. A legend of high adventure. Long ago. During the First Age. A series of dark spells were created. One of these spells had the power to bridge our world and the one of darkness. spell with no purpose but that of destruction before it could be invoked stolen and broken into six separate parts six lines six incantations the spell however was dark and powerful and not easily destroyed so instead it was hidden away in a place where none would find it 
scattered about the world in six separate locations. Six different families entrusted with its safekeeping. But men are mortal. And time can be the enemy of fear. All too soon we forget how the bee will sting and the fire will burn. As time passed, the families forgot what these marks were for. Mankind dismissed the ancient warnings about these words of power. They were merely stories, tales from a long past time. But the denizens of the world of darkness knew nothing of time. With infinite patience they waited. Then, after a millennia, to their dark joy, the spells were rediscovered. This story has been a long time coming. I hoped it could wait, but dark forces move on the horizon. Listen to me carefully, boy. This is an evil place. An ancient tomb, hidden, undisturbed for a millennia, guarded by the forces within those woods. Your skills in combat are spreading far, young men. I am looking to hire someone such as you. Someone looking for adventure. Be strong. Much depends on you. Sir, I heard that you are the young man responsible for running off the thieves and bandits that plagued this area in recent times. Oh, good job, good job. Uh, allow me to introduce myself. I am Aruku, a cleric and guardian of sacred land east of here. Oh, at least I was. Recently, bandits similar to the ones you so <laughs> gracefully dispatched beat me and threw me out of my home. I watched as they broke apart graves and ancient tombs, scattering the contents. 
I thought they were thieves looking for gold, and that once they found none, they would leave me in peace. But when they found what they were looking for, not gold, just a scroll of old leather, they did not leave. Sir, I am the custodian of this place, and have failed in my duty to protect it. Now all I want is my home back. Can you please help rid me of this menace? I have no money, no treasures to offer as payment. Just the knowledge that this is a just cause and the promise that the gods will favor any who come to my aid. I also have a bow crafted by artisans many moons north of here that I will gladly give you upon your return. It is not worth a great deal, but does fire far and true. Rao, you look troubled. Allow me to read to your fortune, Blissed. Give me your hand. You have just returned from a journey. You entered the Hayadoko forest and lived to tell. <laughs> you have done this. Hmm. Young man, you have been tricked. The gold you were recently given is hexed. These coins bear the mark of the Kosai. Avoid this sign. It is evil. Where did you get such coins? I cannot see the one who paid you. He has the ability to hide from my vision. Be careful, Rao. The giver of these coins has great power. Ah, you have help though. You have a familiar. The bird called Guso. Good. He is your spirit guy sent from the gods to watch over you. Use him and trust his vision. Listen to me carefully, boy. You have importance in this world, that much is clear. You are a tool of the gods, for they watch you move with interest. You need to leave as soon as possible and travel to the mountains north of here. There is a fortress there called Vaitaku. Seek out an ancient tree and eat its fruit. The fruit that grows on this tree has great power, and when eaten will show you your destiny, for this tree is an oracle. Go there now. But remember, barbarian, this is an evil place. The tree is all that is good there. Uh, you want work, huh? Uh, I don't know. Business has been slow lately, boy. People tell me bandits have made our neighboring forest their home. Anyone trying to get here is being robbed, or worse. It's made Baumusu nervous. He thinks it's the beginning of dark times. I think they just need a good kicking before they'll move on to someone else's forest. Hmm. Baumusa tells me you've become pretty good with that sword of yours. Uh, maybe you could... Ah. Uh, well, maybe I've got some other work around here you could do. Uh, uh, how about washing down some tables for me or uh, mopping the floor? Uh, well, maybe you can help Tati clean dishes or, or sweep up or pick up or after her. She's... Kind of a mess herself. People keep flushing foreign objects down the toilet, which is... You, boy. You are the one they call Rao. Word of your skills in combat are spreading far, young man. I am looking to hire someone such as you. Someone looking for adventure. Someone who does not shy away from a challenge. There is a forest north of here you may have heard of called Hayadoko. It has a reputation for being a dangerous place to pass through. People enter it, but few people leave. At the center of this place lays an ancient tomb hidden undisturbed for a millennia, guarded by the forces within those woods. I have no interest in treasure, 
as I am a wealthy man and can pay you handsomely for your trouble. I am, however, interested in a scroll that is said to be in the tomb. This parchment has no value to the common man. It is only a record of my ancestry, written in an ancient tongue. Rao, I am an old man, trying to understand the breadth of my line. Let us say that this document will allow my family to re-establish its proper place in society. If you procure me this scroll, I will make you a very wealthy man. boy was dead. This mark in the Dark One's possession, it had been a trap all along, a decoy, a means of getting him away from his family. Now, Baumsu, last of the Rakus, would have to stand alone against the Kusai. Swiftly did my master travel, but as he approached the inn, a terrible sight greeted him. His home, for as long as he could remember, lay in ruins. The scent of death filled the air. His old friend, the innkeeper, lay where he had fallen, slain by many blows, his hand still clutching a sword. Then he saw Baumusu, propped up against a tree, surrounded by bodies bearing the sign of the Kusai. He sat still, axe in hand, pierced by many arrows. As my master approached, Still alive, Baumsu opened his eye. Ooh. Dark times. Dark times indeed. Much grief did Rao feel. The pain from his loss was great. With every step his hatred grew. With every step a fire rose burning deep within his heart. Fire that burned away his pain, turning it to anger. His heart demanded vengeance. His blade cried out for blood. The Dark One's trail was easy to follow. Deep within a desert, shrouded in night, the necromancer's home lay sprawled like the bones of some ancient beast. Outside its gates, bodies hung as a warning to any who would dare go further. <laughs> My master scoffed at these warnings. His rage knew no bounds. Many men would die here today. And so, this story draws to an end. A once dark and powerful magician lay slain to my master's blade, as did his legion of terror. Tati was safe with her brother, and the six marks of Cree were once again protected. In time, my master became known throughout the lands as a great and noble warrior. His adventures were many, and his battles grand. As the oracle had prophesied, Rao did in time become a legend. Indeed, his name was spoken to calm children on stormy nights, and I hear one day he did sit with the gods. <laughs> but all of this is a different story for another time. Now I, Kuzo, his servant and chronicler, must move on. Maybe one day I will tell you another tale. Until then, farewell.
And so, this story draws to an end. A once dark and powerful magician lay slain to my master's blade, as did his legion of terror. Tati was safe with her brother, and the six marks of Cree were once again protected. In time, my master became known throughout the lands as a great and noble warrior. His adventures were many, and his battles grand. As the oracle had prophesied, Rao did in time become a legend. Indeed, his name was spoken to calm children on stormy nights, and I hear one day he did sit with the gods. <laughs> but all of this is a different story for another time. Now I, Kuzo, his servant and chronicler, must move on. Maybe one day I will tell you another tale. Until then, farewell. Turn. My master was blessed by the cleric, a happy man, keen to return home. Who knows if the gods now look down on Rao with favor. Time would show that he would need all the help he could get. Mauruku gave Rao a fine bow, a powerful weapon capable of silently striking from a great distance. My master knew this gift would have an important role in his future adventures. My master's head swam with the information the oracle had given him. The Dark One had tricked him into unwittingly aiding the Kusai in the pillaging of a tomb and the theft of a skin that bore the mark of Kree. Now, all that stood between the Dark One and unearthly power were two skins, two final marks that held the last lines from Kree's dark spell. But what of the sixth? The oracle had seemed deliberately vague about this final mark. Troubled, my master rushed back to the inn where he could learn how to use the Taiha before traveling east to Meifiti, where the Kusai held the boy. Someone in need had requested my master's help. His years of training at Baumusu's side were finally being put to good use. His heart swelled with pride. But who were these bandits the holy man had spoken of? Could they be from the same group he had just encountered? Mauruku had warned him that there were many bandits guarding his home, many more than he had just defeated in his last adventure. The cleric cautioned him to be careful. He would have to use stealth and silently dispatch as many enemies as possible. He thanked the gods that he had his spirit guide to show him the dangers that lay ahead. Many days did my master travel north in search of the Mesa. The story of an oracle intrigued him. Why would someone not want him to know his destiny? He had importance in this world? That is what the fortune teller had said. His life had taken an unexpected turn, and Rao did not know what to expect next. 
lines creased my master's brow. The excitement of high adventure replaced with fear and concern for the people he loved. If dark times were coming, he should be at Balmusu's side protecting his home, but the oracle was exact in its instruction to him. He was told to go find the boy bearing the mark of Cree. A boy in need of a protector. This is where his destiny lies. Cleaning the floor and washing dishes. Ha! This was not the kind of work my master was looking for. He was young and in search of adventure, freeing the land from murderous bandits. Now that was a job worthy of a warrior. He left that same day, his sword strapped to his back. Kuzo, his spirit guide, scouting the path ahead. The bandits had been terrorizing the local roads for months now. Rao had heard that they were camped out in some local ruins. He had also heard that they were many in number and skilled as swordsmen. <laughs> Good. Good. My master did not want this to be too easy. Let us speak outside where we can be alone and bring your Taiha with you. Rao, my boy, it is time for us to speak. This story has been a long time coming. I hoped it could wait, but dark forces move on the horizon. So listen carefully, boy. I am a Rakus, or protector as we are known in these parts. My father, a great and noble warrior who was also a protector, trained me in the art of combat. We Rakus were formed to defend the bearers of the Mark of Cree. We were given the task of guarding these symbols so they could never be brought together and the evil spell they contain invoked. Alas, over time, like the marked families, we too have been wiped out. Someone has been collecting the marks. Someone is intent on using Kree's dark spell. I am the last of my kind and have trained you to carry on the ways of the Rakus. One day... You too shall be known as a protector. My master left early the next day and arrived at the Headoko Forest as the sun began to rise. Baumusu had reacted strangely to this opportunity, saying he did not trust the old man, referring to him as Dark One. He warned Rao not to aid him, as he sensed evil. But my master was young and stubborn. The old man had promised him gold, and its luster coaxed him on. <laughs> fools! Fools! It was never your fate to save the boy. Now, all the skins are mine. <laughs> Do you think they could hide the marks from me? I have known their whereabouts all along. Rao, you were all that stood. In that, the Oracle was correct. You were the only one who could stop me. That's why I lured you here to rescue this poor wretch. <laughs> but he was already dead. He was just a decoy. You never knew that the real prize was always being guarded by you. Because you're here, the only thing standing between me and my destiny is a half-blind, one-handed old man! Barbarian! Your destiny ends now! Fearing for their lives, the line of Usu fled Tonga too, leaving behind their lands and possessions. After many moons of traveling, they came to a great forest and sought shelter within its grounds. As they feared, the mark returned to the next born, identical in shape and color as the one that Ruutu had bore. Fearing the same would happen to this child as had happened to Ruutu, the line of Usu swore none would see this mark again. 
It would remain hidden and no one would ever leave the forest. I am Sumbu Usu, last of my family line and bearer of the mark of Kree. To break the curse, we agreed to never bear children. To end this legacy through the ending of our family line, this tomb is guarded with purpose. If you find yourself reading my words, take heed. My master returned home in triumph. The neighboring forest had been cleared of bandits and people were once more free to travel. The delighted innkeeper praised Rao's courage. He was a happy man. Soon business would return to normal. Weeks passed and word of my master's skills as a swordsman spread far. Rao enjoyed his newfound fame. <laughs> though the stories were becoming a little exaggerated by his sister, who would recount them to anyone who would listen. Soon, Rao's mind began to drift once more in the hope of adventure. He would not have to wait long. Later that day, as agreed, the old man met my master at the entrance to the forest. He now wore official-looking robes and was flanked by bodyguards. His personality also seemed to have changed. He now seemed less feeble, more demanding, less in need. Rao handed over the scroll and received his payment. The parting words from the old man chilling him to the bone. You are a rich man, barbarian. When your day comes, you too can now afford such a tomb. <laughs> My master traveled home slowly. The gold wore heavy on his heart. The prospect of its riches failed to excite him. This latest enterprise had troubled him deeply. What was this mark that cursed its owner? Why was it hidden away in such an impenetrable manner? What exactly was on the parchment he had stolen for the old man? For many days, he wandered before returning home, deciding to keep this latest adventure from Baumusu lest he disapprove. 